So the first thing that we really need to do is to shift our thinking a little bit. We need to, um, and this really connects to a lot of the experiences that I heard Kim talk about, need to shift our thinking from disability as a deficit to disability as a difference or as diversity. All right, and that's really shifting from uh, the medical model of disability, which views disability, it's a social construction, that views disability as something that is uh, broken or sick and needs to be fixed or cured. And we want to move away from that thinking toward a social model of disability. And the social model um, views disability as an aspect of one's diversity uh, and therefore not something to be viewed negatively. Uh, this has to happen in all that we say and do, not just uh, reactively when a problem occurs, but proactively in all of our language, all of our written materials, all of the wording that we use, how we approach our teaching, and how we approach our environments. Uh, Thornton and Downs did, uh, published an article in 2010. They are at the University of Arkansas, Little Rock, and they have um, talked about the need to shift this paradigm right at the root in the, disability, uh, uh, the Office of Disability Services. And they changed all of their language. They changed the name of their department to the Office of um, uh, Disability Resource Center rather than um, Disability Services so, or Support Services. So it took the focus away from students need to support to students and their team come up with resources together that are a better match for their environment. Uh, and they changed their mission, things like that. So the whole idea is it's not just top down, but it's bottom up and from the sides and every which way. All right, so as we're shifting our thinking and how we really view disability from the core, we're going to shift our practice from kind of operating under the letter of the law to operating under the spirit of the law. <coughs> Uh, if we look at just the letter of the law, right now there's two pieces of legislation that govern um, the accommodations that we provide in higher education. The first is Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, and this is from 1973. And um, in the non-discrimination non clause, uh, it reads that no otherwise qualified individual with a disability in the United States as defined in section 70520 of the title, shall solely by reason of his or her disability be excluded from participation in, being denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance, or under any program or activity conducted by an executive agency, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, uh, the second piece is the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is from 1990. So some years later, um, and that is, uh, and that reads that no qualified individual with a disability shall be, by reason of such disability, excluded from participation in or be denied the benefits of the services, programs, or activities of a public entity. So what I want to focus your um, attention to is the phrase that appears in both pieces of this legislation, and that is, be, no person shall be excluded from participation in or be denied the benefits of education. So Section 504 started it with anything that is federally funded, and ADA brought it to any sector. So if we are thinking about um, uh, strictly the letter of the law, what this is telling us is we can't bar anyone from applying to and being accepted to a program because they have a disability, and we have to provide their documented accommodations. If we stretch to operating solely from that letter of the law, all right, we're going to let them in, and all right, we're going to provide those accommodations, to stretching ourselves to thinking about the spirit of the law, then what we're going to start thinking is it's going to broaden our idea of what access means, to mean equitable experience and opportunity for achievement. Not just physical access, not just isolated um, accommodations, but equitable experience and opportunity for achievement. And it doesn't mean just not exclude. It means to include, truly include everyone, not just people with disabilities, not just people without disabilities, everyone. Um, so 
A quote that I take from Mara Sapon Shevin uh, from her book, Widening the Circle, is uh, the idea of embracing inclusion as a core value means committing to serving all students in that model over time and consistently. It makes little sense, therefore, to talk about partial inclusion, since this violates the basic principle of inclusion. Everybody, all the time, consistently, everywhere. All right, so, um, um, important thing to say about that is that is not a promise of success. Uh, it's, the spirit of the law is a belief and a practice of equitable experience and opportunity for success. Right? Uh, it, it's presuming competence. I know they can do it, but they still have to show me they can do it. 